Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Trigonometry of Triangles. Now this is largely going to be a recap of what you probably covered lower down in school, but don't worry I am going to cover things from scratch in this video. Now these kind of questions here concern triangles and how we find angles and sides in those triangles, particularly when we have non-right angled triangles. So if we have right angled triangles, you may be familiar with the sine, cos and tan functions, but if we have non-right angled triangles like these, and we want to find an angle or a side or find the area of the triangle, we have to use a slightly different formula. And the formula are these. We have something called the sine rule. And if I was to just draw a triangle, note that we label the angles of the triangles, capital letters, capital A, capital B, and capital C. And the sides of the triangle we label with lowercase letters, but such that the side opposite a particular angle is the same letter. So this would be lowercase a, using a lowercase letter for lengths. That's angle b, so that would be lowercase b. And that's angle c, so the opposite would be this side, lowercase c. So the sine rule is this, that if we do any side divided by the sine of the opposite angle, we will always get the same value if it's the same triangle. So we get the same value if we did this side b divided by the sine of the opposite angle. And that would similarly be equal to c over sine c. Now there's two variants of the sine rule. Sometimes we write it this way and sometimes we write it this way. And notice they're just the same formula. I've just reciprocated both sides of the equation by flipping the fractions. And we tend to use this sine rule if we've got an unknown length. And we tend to use this version of the sine rule if we've got an unknown angle. And we particularly use the sine rule when we have angle side pairs. So if we have an angle side pair and another angle side pair, then we use the sine rule. So that's going to be useful for these first few problems here. 1a, if I just copy out this triangle quickly. Notice here that the sine rule is particularly applicable because look, we've got side opposite angle pair, side opposite angle pair. Now, for this particular question, the side is unknown, so we're going to use this first version of the sine rule. So we do the side divided by the sine of the opposite angle. So a side x divided by the sine of the opposite angle is equal to this side, 7, divided by the sine of the opposite angle, so sine of 40 degrees. Now to get x on its own, I don't want this to divide by sine 30, so I'm going to times both sides of the equation by sine 30. So I get x is sine 30 times by 7 over sine 40. Or if I wanted to, I could have put that sine 30 in the numerator, because when you times a fraction by a non-fraction, you can just put that thing in the numerator. And if we shove that into our calculator, so 7 sine 30 over sine 40, that gives me 5.45 to three significant figures. And always do a sensible check. Um, does this look like it might be 5.45? Well, yes, it's a bit shorter than the 7, so it's a plausible length. Now, in We've got this triangle here, and this time we've got an unknown angle. So this unknown angle, theta, that's the Greek letter theta, 100 degrees here, we've got 5 and 2. So this time we're going to use this second version of the sine rule. We want the unknown to be at the top of the equation. That's how I remember which way around. Look, if we've got an unknown length, the length's at the top. If we've got an unknown angle, the angle's at the top of this formula. So we're going to do sine of this angle here, divided by the opposite length, so sine of theta over 2, is equal to, well this is the other angle side pair, so we put the angle at the top this time, because we're finding unknown angle, and we want to get that theta on its own to solve, well we don't want this over 2, so we're going to times both sides by 2, so sine theta is 2 sine 100 over 5, remember we can just times the numerator by 2, and then to get rid of that sine in front of the theta, we don't divide by sine, that would make no sense. We inverse sine both sides. So we get theta is equal to inverse sine of 2 sine 100 over 5. And if I put that on my calculator, shift sine to get inverse sine, and that gives me 23.2 degrees to three significant figures. And again, that looks like it's sensible. So that's probably the right answer. Now for these next two questions, we're going to need another rule called the cosine rule. So if I just draw that triangle out again, where we've got angles capital A, capital B, capital C, and the sides little a, little b, little c, such that the lengths are opposite these angles with the same letter. And the cosine rule is this. It looks a bit like Pythagoras' theorem. So we start with a squared 
is equal to b squared plus c squared, that's Pythagoras' theorem, but because this is not right angled, we have this adjustment, so it's minus 2bc cos capital A. Now, the thing to note with the cosine rule is that the only angle in this formula is the capital A, that's the only capital letter. But we involve all three sides, little a, little b, and little c. So the cosine rule we might use if we involve all three sides and an angle. So let's use that on this first triangle here. We've got 5, 6, x. Now, the only angle in this form is the capital A, so let's label that as capital A. I'm going to put it in a circle just to avoid confusion with the value actually there. So that means the opposite side is going to be little a. And then the 5 and 6, it doesn't matter how you label them, one's going to be the B, one's going to be the C. But if you look at this formula, if I was to swap the B and the C, it doesn't actually make a difference. So I can now substitute these values into that formula. So we've got A squared, i.e. X squared, is equal to B squared, 5 squared, plus C squared, 6 squared, minus 2BC cos A. And then, obviously, to get x on its own, I can just square root both sides. So it's the square root of everything I have here. And if I do that, that gives me 6.36 to three significant figures. Does that look sensible? Yes, it does. And then b, this time we've got an unknown angle. Again, we know we can use the cosine rule because we're involving all three sides and the angle. So let's label this angle with a capital A. So this side here, the opposite side would be lowercase a, and these other two sides, b and c, in either order. So again, if we use the cosine rule, we get a squared, which is 10 squared, is equal to b squared, which is 3 squared, plus a c squared, which is 8 squared, minus 2 times 3 times 8, times the cos of the angle A, which in this case is theta. Now let's just try and simplify this a bit. So 10 squared is 100. 3 squared plus 8 squared is 9 plus 64 is 73, minus 2 times 3 times 8, simplifies to 48. And a mistake that students often make is they feel like they can do the 73 minus 48. So they imagine like a bracket around this and think it's that cos theta. But we know by Bidmus that this multiplication comes first. So it's 73 minus 48 cos theta. You can't do the 73 minus 48 first. Um, now we can rearrange this to try and make cos of theta the subject. So I use something called the swapsy trick. And what I mean by that is if you were, for example, to do 10 minus 7 equals 3, what two things can we swap in that? Well, we can swap the thing we're subtracting and the result. So we can similarly get 10 minus 3 equals 7. That seems obvious, doesn't it? And we can do the same algebraically. So I can swap the thing I'm subtracting and the result. So I get 48 cos theta is equal to 73 minus 100. And we're going to get a negative number. So 48 cos theta is minus 27. So cos of theta, if we divide by 48, is minus 27 over 48. And by the way, when we do inverse cos of a negative number, we're going to end up with an obtuse angle, which is right, because we can see that this is obtuse. So if we do inverse cos of minus 27 over 48, you get theta is 124.2 degrees. Now, this next question is a bit algebraic. So if I draw this out big, we've got sides of 2x minus 3, 2x minus 2x, and this angle of 60 degrees. And note here that we've got three sides involved and an angle. That suggests we should use cosine rule, as we saw before. So if we substitute this into the cosine rule, noting that this is the angle A, and therefore this is little a, and therefore these two sides are B and C in either order, doesn't really matter. If we sub it in, we get A squared, which is 2x minus 3 squared, is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2 BC, so 2x, 2x minus 2, cos of A, which is 60 degrees. Now let's try and simplify this. If we expand out this bracket, we get 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. This is x squared plus, that's 4x squared minus 8x plus 4. And then note, by the way, that if you do cos of 60 in your calculator, that gives you half. And half times that 2 there is just 1, so this multiplication by 1 doesn't really affect anything, so we can just cross those out. So we still have minus x times 2x, which is minus 2x squared, and we've got minus x times minus 2, which is plus 2x. Now let's just tidy up a bit. 
We have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 is how many x squared have we got? Well, we've got 5x squared minus 2x squared, which is 3x squared. We've got minus 8x plus 2x, which is minus 6x. And we've got the plus 4. Let's put it all on one side, the side with more x's. So 4x squared minus a 3x squared is x squared. If we add that 6x, we get minus 6x. And 9 minus the 4 is plus 5. Now, this is a quadratic, so we factorise it to solve. And it nicely factorises to x minus 5 times x minus 1 is equal to zero, so either x is five or x is one. But it seems unlikely that we'd have two different possible lengths. So let's check which one of these is actually valid. Well, if x was one, that side length would be two minus three, which is minus one. You can't have negative side lengths, so we're gonna reject that. So the solution is x is equal to five. And then finally, these questions on four. We've got this triangle here. We've got y, we've got 10 here. We've got 9 here. Now we might think that we can use the cosine rule because we have all three sides involved and an angle. The problem is, is that the unknown length is not opposite the known angle. And if you were to try and use the cosine rule, you'd end up with a quadratic in x. Now that's actually okay. You could solve in that way because we've got a quadratic solve on here. But it's actually easier to use the sine rule instead, but we're going to have to use it twice. So note with the sine rule, we always identify the side opposite angle pair. So side opposite angle pair. And then, well, this is an unknown side with an unknown angle, so we can't use that. But we do have a side here, and then we can just label this angle theta, which we're going to find first. So we use the sine rule in the usual way. Do you remember we use the flipped one with the angles at the top? So sine of the unknown angle over the opposite side is equal to sine of this angle here divided by the length of the opposite side. So to make theta the subject to solve, we times both sides by 10. So sine of theta is equal to 10 sine 61 over 9. And then we just inverse sine to get rid of that sine in front of the theta. So theta is inverse sine of 10 sine 61 over 9. And that is equal to... 76.3607. I'm going to give lots of decimal places because we're not yet done, so we don't want a rounding error. Now note that if we know this angle here is equal to 76.3607, that means we can find the third angle because we know the angles in a triangle just add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus that answer we just got, so I use the answer key, minus the other angle of 61, that means the remaining angle here is 42.6393. So we've got the final angle. And then look, we've got the angle opposite the unknown side. So we can use the sine rule again in order to find the side. So if I do that, now we've got an unknown length. So we're going to put the unknowns at the top of the sine rule. So we use this original version. Y over the sine of the opposite angle is equal to some other side. Let's use a 9 over the sine of 61. I could have similarly used a 10 over the sine of 76.3, but it's easier to use these ones because we've got whole numbers here. And then we just need to times by that sine of 42.6393. So that gives us 9 sine 42.6393 over sine of 61. And if I put that in my calculator, and that gives me 6.97 to three sigmoid figures. Let's just check it looks sensible. Yes, it does. It looks a bit shorter than these two lumps. So that's probably right. And then finally in part B, they want us to determine the angle of this triangle. Now the formula for the area of a triangle is this. If I have an angle and I've got two sides around it, so two sides and what we call the included angle, then the area is just equal to half AB sine of the angle between them. You might have seen it as half AB sine capital C before. So we can then apply that to this triangle here. So part B the area is going to be half times, well, we just need to use any three of these angles. We've got all three lengths. So let's just use this angle of 61 here. And we're gonna use the two lengths either side of it. So it's gonna be half times this A times this B. So half times 6.97. We should really use the original value rather than the rounded value times the B, which is 10, times by the sine of the angle between those two lengths, so between the 6.97 and the 10, that included angle is 61. And if I just shove that all in my calculator, I get an area of 30.5.